My name's Jason. I'm the Soundpack and Metadata Coordinator at Audio Design Desk, and today I'm going to give you a quick overview into our metadata and show you how to tag your sounds so they work flawlessly inside of ADD. Let's get started. All right, so here I am in Audio Design Desk, and I'm going to open up the importer by hitting Command-I. And so when you first open the importer, you're going to see a bunch of these different columns. And I'll just give you a quick overview of what everything is. So first up are file and title. File is the name of the file, as it is on your computer or your hard drive. And title is the name of the file as it shows up in Audio Design Desk. Normally those two will be the same, but you can change the title, but not the file name, inside of Audio Design Desk. Next up are our four main categories for how we organize our sounds inside of Audio Design Desk. The first of these categories is category. Category is the broadest of them all, and in the side of Audio Design Desk, there are seven. Ambience, which includes things like city, exteriors, traffic, ocean waves. Foley, which is cloth and prop movements. We also have footsteps, which are pretty self-explanatory. Next up is music, which is broken down into elements, stems, full mixes, and loops. We'll have another tutorial on that later. Sound design, which includes things like hits, rises, and transitions. Sound effects, which includes things like gunshots or explosions or car noises. And finally, vocalizations, which include things like human expressions and creature and animal voices. Next up is subcategory. Now for sounds that aren't music, there's only two kind of subcategories you really have to worry about. The first is element. An element is a single one-shot sound effect that you can use inside of Audio Design Desk by assigning it to a trigger or by bringing it into the search menu. The other subcategory is stems. Stem is a long, continuous sound that can be broke up into different elements uh, for use as either one single holistic sound inside of Audio Design Desk or be broken up into its component pieces. The reason we have this distinction is mainly to do with the triggers. Again, you can assign elements to your triggers, which allows you quicker use of sounds rather than having to listen through a long stem and just find the one sound you need. Next up are type and subtype. Type is a bit more narrowly defined than category, but still fairly broad. Next up is the sync marker. The sync marker is the point in the sound where when you use your triggers, this is where the sound will be synced to. It is at the highest point of the sound, and I'll show you how to add those in later. Next up are intensity and complexity, which are graded on a scale from one to five. Intensity is how intense the sound is, or how powerful it is. So for example, cloth rubbing will usually be at about a one, a door closing, if it's not being slammed, is usually about a 2 or 3, whereas a big explosion will generally be in the 4 to 5 range. Complexity is how complex the sound is, or how much is happening within the sound. So again, a quick cloth rub will be about a 1, whereas a robot transformation will generally be in a 4 to a 5 range. Finally, we have keywords. These are the terms that allow you to find and search for sounds within Audio Design Desk. They can usually relate to things like objects, like doors, or cars, or different kinds of vehicles, or explosions, as well as actions, so opening or closing, and speed, whether it's quick or fast or slow. Now that you have a basic understanding of our metadata, let's go ahead and tag some sounds. So I'll just drag this batch of sounds I have into the importer, and we'll start tagging. So I'll select this ceramic bowl being set down on a wooden table, and go ahead with the four main categories. And there are a couple of ways to do this. The first is by going to these handy boxes and typing out everything. Now, as you can see, as I'm typing in Foley, it begins to autocorrect to Foley, so you can simply hit Enter, or you can go to the end of this handy drop-down menu and click on Foley. Now, as you can see, once that's been entered, the sound becomes italicized, and this yellow dot appears next to the file name. This shows that some of the metadata for that sound has been altered, and now we need to save it. And there are two ways to do this. First off, you can hit Option Command S on your keyboard, or you can go down to the bottom right hand corner and click Save Edits. Next up is subcategory. Now, I know this is an element because it's a single quick sound, and again, quickly autocorrects. Next up are type and subtype. So I'll just click the drop down menu for type, and we can see all the types available under the Foley category. So, as you can see, these types are still relatively broad, but much more narrow than category. So we have things like body, books, cloth, keys, metal, but 
because I know this kitchen bowl is under kitchen, I will select kitchen and save. Finally, there's the subtype. So as you can see, these are fairly narrow subtypes available under the kitchen type. And look, bowls right on top. The second method of quickly entering categorization metadata is by guessing. This uses our machine learning to quickly place your sounds inside of our organization system as quick as possible. And again, there are a couple ways to do this. The first is by going to this guessing box down here and clicking on the magnifying glass for all metadata fields. You can also go to metadata, guess, categorization metadata, or hit control shift command G on your keyboard. And boom, everything's correct. Now, a quick heads up. Part of the reason everything is correct is because inside of my hard drive, I have my folder structure set. So as you can see, I have a folder for category, the subcategory, and the type. You don't have to go that deep, but it is a good practice to just break down your sounds into different folders based on category. So for example, if you have all your sounds in just one single folder with no sort of hint as to what category it is, let's say you have a sound effect whoosh, like a baseball bat or a tennis racket swooshing through the air. If you have it just in a folder with all of your other sounds and no sort of categorization structure, uh, Audio Design Desk might guess it as a sound design whoosh, which would make it pretty hard to find if you didn't know where to look for it. So again, it's just a good practice to break apart your sounds into folders based on categories ahead of time to make sure your guessing is as accurate as possible. Next up, we're going to add the snake marker. Now, again, there are a couple ways to do this. The first is manually, where I can click and drag on this gray bar and align this marker on top of the high point of the sound. I can then press M on my keyboard or go to markers, add sync marker. The second way to do this is again, guessing. And again, there are a couple ways to do this. First up, we can go back to the guessing box and click on guess sync markers. We can also go down to markers, guess sync marker, or hit G on your keyboard and then adjust as we see fit. Next up is intensity and complexity, which are these two sliders here. So normally I'll listen to a sound through a couple of times. Then I'd say in terms of bowls, that's about a three intensity. And because it's a quick, simple sound, a one complexity. Finally, keywords, where you can simply click in this handy keyword box and begin to type out all the keywords you can think of. If you're having trouble thinking of keywords for your sounds or want to add some ones you haven't thought of yet, you can simply click on the add menu and go to A through Z and scroll through all the different letters of the alphabet to find keywords that you think would fit. You can also go down to selector and bring up all of the keywords available within your audio design desk sounds and simply click on the ones you want to add. And as you can see, it's been added in alphabetical order. Now, what I've just shown you is how to tag an individual sound, but the process for tagging multiple sounds is pretty much exactly the same. Simply select your multiple sounds, and if we guess, we can see all of the changes are saved across all the sounds within our selection. And if you want to, you can simply go back through and make any little adjustments you want to individual sounds. Let's say you have a batch of untagged sounds that you want to very quickly tag, and you have a sound tagged with some of the similar metadata that you want in this new batch. Well, you can either input all that data by hand, or I can show you a quicker way. Simply bring in all the sounds you want, select your pre-tagged sound and hit Command C, then select your untagged sound or sounds and hit Option V. This brings up our paste attributes menu which allows you to copy and paste any attribute available within Audio Design Desk to your sounds. Now, just a quick heads up, this does overwrite any of the pre-existing metadata you have within the sounds you're pasting the attributes to. So say, for example, you have keywords inside of these untagged sounds and you don't want to overwrite them with the first set of keywords. You can simply deselect keywords. But because these are empty for me, I'll leave it on for now and hit OK. 
And as you can see, all the metadata has been added from this sound to this sound. Everything from a sync marker, complexity, intensity, and all the keywords. Now I can just simply go through and make any of the adjustments I see fit. And voila, in a matter of seconds, I have tagged all of these stems. Now I'll show you how to tag a stem. The process for tagging stems is almost exactly the same as it is for tagging elements, just with a few differences. For example, in subcategory, you're going to be entering stem instead of element. So if I select all of these and guess, as you can see, these are now fully stems, office, stapler for the stapler sound, and tape for the tape snapping sound. The biggest difference in tagging stems is in how you mark them up. And I'll introduce you to a new type of marker, the element marker. An element marker is the boundaries you set within a stem that dictates that if you decide to break apart the stem, these are the boundaries that will be broken out. And again, there are a couple ways to create them. So for example, in this sound, I can simply click and drag in the middle of the editor to make a selection and hit U on the keyboard or go to markers, create element marker from selection. Now, if I were to bring this sound into audio design desk, these are the boundaries that would be set if I wanted to break out this element. Next, add your sync marker and repeat the process for the rest of the stem. And there you go. The stem has now been broken up into individual elements. Now, that took a lot of time and effort. And if you have particularly long stems, doing it by hand can be kind of a hassle. So I'll show you another quick way where you can quickly break down your stems. It's called the element detector. I can open the element detector by going to markers, element detector, or by hitting option U on my keyboard. And so this is what the element detector looks like when it's first brought up. So I'll give you a quick rundown. So I'm going to click auto update on just to make sure all of my changes were reflected in real time. And so the first thing I want to show you is minimum duration. This sets the minimum for duration for how long you want your elements to be broken down into. And so I can make a quick selection of this first sound and see it's about a tenth of a second. So I can either click and drag the slider until I get to about a tenth of a second or simply click into it and type in a tenth of a second. Next up are pre-attack and post-release. This allows you to give your sounds a little extra headroom or a little extra room at the end. So for example, if you have a sound where the elements are slightly different in terms of their length, uh, you can make sure that none of the sounds are cut off. Now I'm gonna click on add sync markers and add element markers to show you that process. So as you can see, the sync markers right here are pretty much right on top of the element marker. So I'm gonna add a little bit of pre-attack to give them some separation and then a little bit of post-release at the end. And I will just save. And voila, you very quickly tag your stem. So lastly, I'll show you the threshold. This threshold basically sets how sensitive you want the element detector to be. So if we go all the way to zero, nothing shows up. But if we go all the way down to negative 60, we get a lot of elements being created out of empty nothingness. So I'll go back to negative 14 now that I've given you the basic overview of tagging, I'll show you a couple of other neat features available inside of Audio Design Desk. The first is Title to Keywords, which is accessible by going to Metadata, Keywords, Title to Keywords, or Control-Command-K on your keyboard. This very quickly adds any words inside of the title into your Keywords button, so it's a very good place to start. Now, say for example, I'm typing through my keywords and I misspell something. And before I go ahead and export my sounds, I just want to quickly check to make sure nothing is misspelled so I don't have any trouble finding these sounds later. Well, if you go to command semicolon on your keyboard or metadata, keywords, check spelling, and click it, boom. Instantly, all the sounds with misspelled keywords have been isolated into this folder where you can quickly work on them. Now, you could theoretically go through all of these sounds and just delete the sound individually, or 
by selecting all of your sounds and hitting Option Command F or going to Metadata, Keywords, Find and Replace Keywords. You can quickly find and replace any of the keywords within your sounds. Now, you can do that by either typing out the word into the word box or by clicking on the drop down menu to see alphabetically all the keywords inside the selected regions. Now, let's click on the misspelled keyword and in the box labeled with, type in the correct word and hit replace. And as you can see, now the word is spelled correctly. Now, this doesn't just have to be misspelled keywords. For example, I don't know why the word across is in here, so I want to just remove that. You would simply type across into the word box or select it from the drop down menu and leave with blank. And it has completely removed the keyword. Now, another neat feature inside of Audio Design Desk is folders. So if I click on this plus button right here, or go to File, New Folder, or Shift-Command-N. This allows me to break up my session into individual chunks, which I can work on independently. Now, let's say you've been working a long day on a big session, and you need to walk away, but you're afraid you might lose your progress if something happens. Well, Audio Design Desk allows us to save our sessions by hitting Command-S on the keyboard and typing in a name. I'm going to name this ADD Demo. If I close out of the session by hitting Option Command W on my keyboard and going to where our demo session is saved and clicking on it, boom, it saved everything from our folders to all of our metadata. And so you never have to worry about losing all your progress. Now I'm going to show you how to import your sounds into ADD. And there are a couple ways to do this again. The first is once you've done with all your tagging to click on Import to Library. This allows you to import sounds directly into your library. As you can see, here we can see our file directory as to where it's going to be saved. You also have the option to convert your files into various different formats, such as WAV, AIF, and M4A, and in various sampling and bit depths. So all the various ones for WAV and M4A as well. Now, if the files you have are already in a format you want, you can just click Copy Files, where ADD will just copy the files over into your library. You can also choose Move Files, which will physically move the files from its original location into the location you have selected here. You can also create a CSV on export in order to see physically what kind of metadata is in your sounds. And if you have Convert selected, you have the option of converting into Add Audio upon import, which is our special file format that we use inside of Audio Design Desk. Now, if you have stems, you also have the option to create elements on export. So I'm just going to go ahead and check that box. And if your elements don't have sync markers, you can also guess upon import. Now I'm just going to go ahead and import these sounds with the import button. And if we go to our library tab, you can see in this latest import window that all of the sounds we had have imported. Another way to break down your stems upon import is by simply grabbing and dragging them into a trigger. This brings up this handy dialog box that says your stem contains elements. Do you want to create clips and add them now? And I can just click yes. And as you can see, now this trigger is populated with all the elements from that stem. The other method for exporting your sounds is by creating a sound pack. This is also especially helpful if you have a friend who's using Audio Design Desk and you want to share tagged sounds with them. So we can just go to Export Sound Pack, File, Export Sound Pack, or Command B on your keyboard. And so you can add a title to your pack. I will just call this Demo Pack. You can also add a quick description. And just like in the importer, we have the option to convert, copy, and move your files, as well as the option to create a CSV on export, encode it as add audio, and create elements on export. So I'm just going to click copy files and create elements on export. And once you're done with that, you also have the option to load that pack directly into Audio Design Desk. And that is how you tag your sounds for a more quick and efficient workflow inside of ADD. 
If you want more videos like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. My name is Jason, and this is Audio Design Desk.